So hello, Doctor Bill. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. So um, before we started, you you <clears throat> brought up a, uh, an interesting question. Um, mm -hmm. What do you do if and when, by God, DNS fails? You know what what is Robert Lardner doing? <laughs> I want to know. Well, before I rip out my hair and run from the room. Before? Before. <laughs> well, maybe I have already ripped out my hair. But before I do that, um, I must say that the it is not that a DNS fails as much as I fail to utilize the nuances of what DNS has to offer. Okay. I think that many times... If the basic go-tos fail, there is an under layer of alternatives that can be used to activate the patient, especially in the realm of exercise. Um, so I think that, again, when you analyze a patient from the point of view of uh, force vectors that the patient can generate along oblique lines, lateral lines, sagittal lines, transverse lines. This allows you to examine the patient in a different way. When you talk about e examining force vectors along mm. lateral lines, are you referring to kind of checking the function of the muscle chains that's right that that and also for example you have a patient lying on their side you are trying to activate the anterior the first anterior oblique chain and you are pulling and pushing the shoulder and you can feel that the lateral anterior lateral aspect of the abdominal wall is still soft and is not participating in this uh, function, and that you are not really getting the kind of response you need. So these are sometimes what you come across. Uh, you are hoping to, let's say the person is in, you are trying to work with the shoulder, and you cannot turn off the pec sufficiently. And therefore, the, the, the muscle is still participating even when you don't want it to. So you have two extremes, one where the muscle refuses to be part of the chain, and the other where you cannot get it to integrate or switch off uh, because the person's neuron pool is, is skewed to having that muscle on, or the neuron pool is skewed to having that muscle off. Yeah, it's and it's total sensitivity where you cannot turn it off or total the, desensitivity. That's right. That's right. And, um, and there are times when you also have the phenomenon where the muscle is working, but the patient cannot feel it. So they tell you that the muscle is off. You go, no, it's on. They go, well, I can't feel it as well as I can the other homonymous muscle. And that again, requires a kind of reconnection of the sensation with the muscle when it is active. The patient has to come to a, an understanding and build up a, a sensory schema for that muscle again, not only in isolation, but also in integration with other muscles in the chain that is that it requires or it's required for. So these uh, kind of challenges means that we really must analyze better the, the position and refine the position of activation and follow either uh, the rules of, of positioning and support, but also understanding that we can bias them in such a way that there is no escape from using the, um, the muscle in question or relaxing the muscle in question. And that is where you really have to um, know 
A, the plan movement pattern, but you also have to know variations on those plan movement patterns, variations that you yourself can introduce that do not necessarily show up in the normal sequence, but respects the DNS rules, but also allows you to force a certain movement, a pattern, or a certain activation. So for example, when in sideline I cannot get the abdominal wall to be sufficiently active, I can always have the patient start the um, start the sideline position a little bit more towards reflex uh, turning three position, meaning they are not yet sideline, but they're on their way to sideline. That's one possibility. The other can be that you start, which, like you said, it does. It's not. Um, it's not going outside the realm no. of the DNS perspective. It's w right within the realm. It's just not a typical position. It's not a typical starting right. position. That's right. right. We always think of you know uh, the th third position is usually an isometric position, um, and yet it has a dynamic flow to it that you can block and force chains to activate with. Right. right. The other thing might be that you start inside line, the low extremity is differentiated, and you use the beginning of stepping forward all the way from the back. The top leg is now stepping forward, and the action of lifting the leg to step forward activates the abdominal wall and then you apply the resistance to the pelvis and asis region so in this way you preload the abdominal wall it has no choice to but to turn on and then you bring the leg into position and now the patient without having to be instructed automatically uses the muscle chain that you're interested in. So these are just a couple of examples of um, ways in which um, you can activate, for example, that uh, the abdominal wall when you will not, you are, there are escapes using, for example, the hip adductors to rotate the pelvis forward instead of the abdominal wall, and then it doesn't have to work. Um, sometimes in the, um, when it comes to the pec muscle, you rarely have to stress the uprighting function in order to switch it off in sideline. Um, and sometimes you have to rarely start with the, um, with the, the, the elbow or the humeral a sideline as the fixed point and rarely get that activated so that the PEC is not overactive in turning or rotating the patient forward. So these things uh, are rarely, um, and in so doing, you have to make sure the subscapularis, for example, is active, is sufficiently active to assist in turning uh, in bringing the scapula towards the humeral, the fixed humors on the table. These are finer points that are necessary in order to change the motor pattern around the shoulder. Sometimes the subscapularis is either uh, um, insufficient or it does not have um, the opportunity to activate in time to assist in turning and thereby allowing the PEC major or even PEC minor to not be so active. Mm. This is especially important because sometimes you will do these turning movements with the shoulder and it does not improve the patient's function. It doesn't improve it because the muscle a group that dominates the turning is pathological and it is not easily seen 
just by observation. It has to right. be palpated. I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, I think that's the trick that you're pointing to. It's there is a certain reliance, you know, on uh, the unique quality of DNS that mm -hmm. if you just simply kind of understand the exercise movement, you can just put somebody through the exercise movement, snap mm -hmm. your fingers, and that's going to be the magic pill that's to right. make them feel better. And, and there's a reliance on ob observing it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm watching you do it. It looks good to me. Mm -hmm. It looks like how I've been taught by in the DNS course, how rolling mm -hmm. occurs. So when that fails and the patient still gets up and they still have loss of function of the shoulder, That's right. at that point, you throw your hands up. You don't know what to do anymore That's right. because there's no, you know, you're not going to go to the alternative kind of more um, artificial mm -hmm. exercises for strengthening mm -hmm. rotator cuff muscles. Mm -hmm. Um but again, there is a trick of DNS didn't necessarily fail. No, you failed. <laughs> you failed <laughs> to you use didn't it fully understand. Better. That's right. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You failed to understand uh, how to actually apply the DNS principles, mm -hmm. and you were just simply relying on you know observation to, to mm -hmm. tell you something. Mm -hmm. um, when if you if you figure out a way to hone in on the support points and mm -hmm. the, and palp and palpatory findings and check and recheck, then mm -hmm. you will see that yeah, it might look pretty good, but things I can see why it's not working for you or why you still have mm -hmm. symptoms mm -hmm. and loss of function. That's so, right. Because it we are easier. <laughs> I mean, no, it doesn't like make said, it any like easier. It, just knowing that okay, I, I, your pec is still firing and that's probably what knowing that is nice but if we can't get you to figure out a way to to use the pattern and use the function yes, right. and turn the peck off then it's always going to be a problem yes it's so if you I enjoyed think... this conversation and want to hear more like it then please like this video and subscribe to our channel you can also stay up to date on our latest seminars on our social media pages on instagram and facebook at imtr seminars 